Knowing what you can do with editing even before capturing the image is a very vital skill to learn. Let's take a look at this example. As always, if you want to follow along, you can find the raw file in the link of the description of this video. And now let's begin. So here we have a rather boring looking image. We are missing contrast and the colors really are not pleasing. But on location, I already knew there were things I can do in Lightroom to make it a lot more interesting. For example, take a look at the sky. We have some really nice puffy white clouds in here. And behind those clouds, we have a cold blue color tone, which is a little darker. We can take advantage of that contrast by using masks and thus make the sky look more dramatic. What about the distracting objects in the foreground? On location, it might look ugly, but you can actually get rid of them with the newest update now even in Lightroom. So removing them will make the image less distracting and will in turn create a more pleasing composition. What about the colors? Since we're working on a raw file, these look especially flat, but with a little bit of color grading, we can change that. These are all factors which we can know before even taking the image. I'm going to start this by cropping. I'm going to crop because as you can probably see, the image is leaning towards the right and I want to change that. So let's try to straighten it. That is looking much better. Just keep the tree nicely centered and we're good. We're always starting with the basic adjustments. The most important part is to set up the tonal adjustments for upcoming things like masking and color grading. In this case, I'm going to bring down the highlights all the way. And what this does is we will get a little more detail in the sky with those white puffy clouds. Then I'm going to bring up the shadows just to have some more details in the darkest areas. This will mostly affect the tree in the distance and maybe also the field in the foreground. And we can right away introduce a little more contrast by working on the blacks. So let's bring them down a little bit. I'm always paying close attention to the histogram because we don't want to introduce under or overexposure at this point. So the histogram will help you with that. I'm also going to introduce some texture because I want this shot to look sharp. I'm also going to add clarity for the same effect. And then let's work on the white balance. We could make it slightly warmer. So I'm going to increase the temperature. Doing this will give the image a more pleasing look, especially with the golden tones in the foreground. I think this looks great. We could also bring up the tint just a little bit because there might be a little green color cast in this image and we want to get rid of that. All right. So that's the image after the basic adjustments. And at this point, what you can clearly see is the different color theme for this image. But exposure wise, not that much has changed. That's because I'm going to change that using masks. So let's go ahead, open up the masking panel. And the first thing I want to do is to work on the sky, which I want to make more dramatic, as I mentioned in the intro. So we want to take advantage of the contrast between the white puffy clouds and the dark blue sky. We can simply use a color range mask and let's click somewhere in the blue area of the sky. And immediately, thanks to the overlay, you can see how we are nicely selecting all the blue areas without affecting the white puffy clouds. That's the exact mask we need. And what I'm going to do now is to simply pull down the exposure. And by doing that, we're adding this nice contrast in the sky. This looks really good. Exposure will bring down all tones kind of equally. So the bright parts as well as the dark parts. But by using the blacks slider, we can only bring down the dark parts. So the bright parts will stay bright. And this way we add even more contrast. Let's just do this by bringing down the blacks and you can see how this will add way more punch to this selection. I'm also going to bring down the temperature because I want the dark part of the sky to have a slightly colder color tone than the rest of the image. And these colder color tones work really, really well together with the yellow field in the foreground. Okay, then let's also add a little bit of noise reduction. Uh, let's see it down here in the details tab. I'm going to add noise reduction because there is a little bit of noise in the sky. You probably won't see it due to YouTube compression, but we're not going to lose any important details since we're just targeting the blue tones of the sky this way. 
so we can safely pump up the noise reduction and get a buttery smooth sky that way. Okay, that's looking great for the first mask already. I want to continue using another color range mask. Again, I'm clicking right here in the blue part of the sky, but this time I just want to affect the top part. So I'm going to click on the mask, choose subtract, use a linear gradient, and I'm going to subtract pretty much all of it except for the top. And again, all I want to do is to make it darker to add more punch to the image, making the sky more interesting. So bring down the exposure. And again, I'm going to bring down the blacks. I'm actually going to drop them all the way. And this is such a huge change. It makes the image look so, so much better. And again, I'm also going to add a bit of noise reduction up in here, since we are only targeting the blue areas. Wonderful, that looks great. We could maybe adjust the linear gradient a little bit so the darkness goes a little further down. All right, then let me create a linear gradient and I'm going to target the upper right corner like this. I'm doing this because I want this particular spot to be even darker. So let's again once more drop the blacks. Just like that, wonderful. So. As you can see, the sky with just three masks looks much, much better. Obviously, this is a very, very heavy change, but I'm not breaking any rules, so you can do what you want. If you don't like the outcome, obviously, you don't have to apply it as strong as I do. Now, let's continue by working on the foreground. There's not much going on, but I want to target that wheat field right here using a linear gradient, just like this. And I want to make it brighter, so I'm going to bring up the whites. Pay close attention to the histogram because we don't want to overexpose. And I'm also going to bring up the blacks. This will lessen the contrast, but it will also give the wheat field some kind of glowing look. And I think this looks super, super good. And finally, I actually think that's it for the foreground, but I want to use one more linear gradient covering the sky like this. And what I want to do in here is to use some clarity and clarity will make those puffy clouds pop even more. So I'm going to add quite a bit here, but since I'm only targeting the clouds up in the sky, everything's fine. Perfect. So that's the image after the masking adjustments. Let me show you the before version with the basic adjustments applied. And here we have the masks added on top. Looks so much better. Now let's do some color grading. I'm going to start this in the color mixer and I want to work on the saturation. Again, there's not much going on. I just want to bring up the warmer tones a little bit. So the field in the foreground does look a bit more vibrant. I'm also going to bring up the blue saturation just to have a more colorful sky. And I'm also going to bring up the green saturation a bit just so the tree in the center is a little more colorful. Okay, now I'm going to skip over the split toning. I don't think it's needed for this image. What I'm going to do, however, is I'm going down into the calibration tab and I want to bring down the blue primary hue. This will affect the blue tones of the sky, but it will also affect those warmer tones in the foreground. So just check out what happens if I bring down the blue hue. We get some more orange-ish color tones in the foreground which I think looks pretty good. But again, that's just a personal thing. If you don't want to do it, don't do it. And I'm also going to bring up the saturation here, just like that. And I think we're pretty much done with the color grading. Now I want to sharpen this image. So let's do that in the details tab. I'm going to use the same settings as I always do. I bring down the radius all the way. I increase the details all the way up. Then we want to hold down the Alt key while we increase the, ma the masking slider so we can nicely see where the sharpening will be applied. And now let's increase the amount of sharpening. Okay, done. So that's looking pretty good. But another thing I want to do is some focus stacking. And of course, we need to clean up the image of those distracting elements. As I said earlier, I could do this in Lightroom with the new AI removal tool, but since I'm going to do focus stacking in Photoshop anyway, I also want to clean up the image in Photoshop this way. First, we need to apply these editing settings on our focus stacking image. 
So I'm going to select it down here and let's hit synchronize, check all and hit synchronize. And with that out of the way, right click on the image, go to edit in and choose open as layers in Photoshop. So here we have the two images open up as layers in Photoshop. You can see as I turn them on and off, these are not aligned perfectly. So we want to do that first. Select both these layers, go to edit and choose auto align layers and just hit OK. Photoshop will do the rest for you. And when I turn them off now, you can see they are much better aligned. Not perfect, but that doesn't matter for the focus stacking part. I'm now going to apply a black layer mask on that top layer. So I'm holding down the Alt key and click on the layer mask icon. Then let's grab the brush tool by pressing B. Set the foreground color to white. And now I'm going to brush over the field in the foreground to reveal the sharp version here. Just like that. I'm doing this really, really roughly. You won't notice the transition between those two layers anyway in the distance. So I don't need to work too precisely here. All right, that looks great. Now, of course, I also need to crop the image a bit. So let's hit C and I'm holding down Alt and the Shift key to keep the proportions and nicely crop the image. Again, I'm keeping the tree in the center, of course, and that's it. So focus stacking is done. Next up, let's clean up the image. I'm going to merge these two layers by hitting Control Shift Alt E. And then I'm going to use the spot healing brush. And first I want to get rid of these sensor spots up there in the sky. That should be it. And now let's clean up the foreground. For that task, I'm going to use the remove tool. And let's zoom in. I want to get rid of these things. These are really distracting because they are overlapping the field and they are kind of going up into the sky and this is just very very distracting you want to prevent such elements most of the times i'm also going to get rid of this one and what's really really bothering me are those black patches in the field in the distance so i'm just going to try to get rid of those by painting over them with the remove tool Doing this, you will probably get some repeating patterns in here, but since this is so far away, I don't think anyone will notice that. So let's try it like this first and see what happens. I want to get rid of a few more, so let's once more use the remove tool. And right here, you can see these repeating patterns, but they are so small, zoomed out, you won't notice them. So that's okay. All right, let's fill the selection real quick. Perfect. And that is the finished image. This is what I pretty much had in mind when I was shooting this scene on location. I knew what I was able to do in Lightroom with the darkening of the sky and the focus taking on the foreground and the removing of the distracting elements. And that's something that's really, really, really important to learn. And it just comes with experience. I hope I was able to bring that point across. If you have anything to add or have any questions left, let me know in the comments. And thank you so much for watching this video.